ever since the laser was invented in 1960, the world of science fiction has dreamt of its potential to blow things up in spectacular fashion. One of the most iconic laser weapons in film, featured in the 1977 classic Star Wars, is the Death Star. Um, here's a clip of Death Star blowing up all around. Um, the Death Star. Um, one of the most iconic laser weapons in film, it's giant, it's gray, it's spherical, and it blows up planets with its bright green laser beam. Um, with today's laser technology, we can't blow away entire planets just yet, um, nor should we want to, but researchers have designed laser devices to do something even cooler, um, blasting rocks. Scientists on the frontier of mineral physics utilize powerful laser devices to send shock waves through minerals, which compresses them momentarily to pressures comparable to those found at the center of the Earth. The applications of these shock experiments um, range from harnessing nuclear fusion energy to learning about the interior of exoplanets. The Matter and Extreme Conditions Facility at Slack National Laboratory is a facility for laser-driven shock compression that studies exactly what it suggests. What's special about the MEC is that it utilizes two different lasers and its shock experiments. The first is the laser that creates the shock wave that, um, that drives the compression, aptly named the drive laser. The other is a special type of laser that emits x-rays rather than visible light. And it begins by accelerating electrons down a mile-long tunnel near to the speed of light. The lines of the tunnel, the walls of the tunnel are lined with thousands of alternating magnets that wiggle the electrons back and forth taking car sickness to an entirely new level. But unsurprisingly, these electrons get more than a little queasy. They react by emitting extremely intense x-rays that, the, that then shine into the sample and create unique patterns on the detector panels behind it. This essentially amounts to taking a picture of the sample. Think of the x-ray as a flash and the detectors as a camera. Last year, we used the MEC to shock sapphire to 1.5 million atmospheres, which is a pressure comparable to those found in the Earth's outer core. To reach such enormous pressures, we had to use tiny blocks of sapphire um, with dimensions around the width of a human hair. Sapphire is one of the hardest minerals on Earth, so we were curious as to how it breaks up, or the incredible pressure and insanely quick time scale of a laser-driven shock as well as how other materials might react to such conditions. We all know how um, disappointing it is to take a picture of a moving object only for it to come out as a blur because the, the, the shutter was open for too long. To avoid this effect and, uh, and observing our block of sapphire getting annihilated, we, uh, we needed our X-ray detector to have an extremely short exposure time. So, this is where putting those electrons through hell really pays off. Taking advantage of special physics that emerges when approaching the speed of light, our XFPL can produce short X-ray pulses that, um, that last for as short as 50 femtoseconds, which, for reference, a femtosecond is one millionth of one billionth of a second. And because our sapphire disintegrates over uh, several billionths of a second, we can snap a picture of the, of the sample with just a millionth of a time with our, the, our X-ray pulses. Our XFPL needs some time to recharge, so, so it can only take one shot for each sample we shot. So, well, the thing is, we don't really know much about how the sapphire reacts over time if we only have one picture of it. So, we came up with a pretty clever, if a little wasteful solution. Repeating the same shot over and over again, and taking, continuously taking pictures of it. Varying the, varying the timing of the X-ray pulses, but keeping everything else constant. And for each image the XFPL takes, it adds one page to our Sapphire flipbook, which then, after dozens of different shocks, we come out with, an, with a complete animation of how exactly the Sapphire breaks up um, under these conditions, and how its powdered remnants decompress afterwards. This is, a, this is the first experiment in which Sapphire has been probed with an X-ray laser, and Signaling a, signaling a new era in not only mineral physics but experimental science in general. 
where we can take short movies on a scale of frames per nanosecond, and of course, from cameraman to lead actor, lasers play an essential role in making this production come to life.